Company coach. And tonight I'm here with Rich Bracconi, and he is an international spirit medium. And he's right here in Millstone, New Jersey. And I wanted Rich to come on and help us find out how we can move through this corona crisis in uh, a way that will nurture our body, mind, and spirit as we move through this difficult time. So Rich, I wanna welcome you. Thank you, Elsie, it's a real pleasure. I always enjoy speaking with you. Yes, yeah, same here. So Rich, I just wanna go back a little bit and give our audience a background because even as a teenager, you were uh, studying karate intensely. You became like a, a fifth degree black belt. You co-owned and taught at the um, American Karate Institute for over eight years and, and then joined the Hamilton uh, Township Police Force. And from there, you spent uh, a lot of years, uh, all over 24 years as a undercover narcotics detective. But you said to me that, you know, when you got ready to retire, despite all the accolades that you had and, and all of the accomplishments, that there just seemed to be something missing. And you began a very deep personal inner journey and self-reflection to find out what was really true. And you described that as a, as a confusing and a difficult time in your life. So can you tell us about that a little bit? Oh, yes, I'd be happy to. I think everybody wants uh, personal happiness in their life. You know, everybody wants to be at peace, to make um, wise choices you know, to produce loving outcomes in their life. And I think that, you know, all the years in, you know, doing martial arts and being a police detective, I don't think that anything more than challenging or opening yourself up to the truth can bring you to a level of personal happiness and love than, than what I've experienced in doing all this. So I, I think it had to do with me challenging why I was so unhappy. And I concluded after a while when I started to examine my life is what source of guidance I was using to make choices with. So even though I was in that profession, I was divorced from my wife. I was by myself. I was tens of thousands of dollars in debt. And I started looking at the source of guidance I was using in life. And I realized that there's two inside of us all. You know, we think about things and we make choices based on what our mental thinking tells us. And then there's another guidance inside of us that I've learned is my spirit that resonates um, knowledge uh, within ourselves. Like we'll touch here and just say, I know this is true or we know the loving thing. And we'll say the words we know. We sense the loving things. We know the loving things. We know what's right for our life. We can sense a guidance or an influence when we should make one choice over another. And when I started following that more and I started learning how to quiet my thinking, that's when the shift happened in my life. Great. All right, so that shift happened and you were you were still in this growing process and through it all you started doing mediumship galleries and tell us a little bit about how that began and progressed and then also about your first book. Do you have your book being more of God? There we go. Great. Right. Yeah. Um yeah, um, you know, I thought I was crazy, to tell you the truth. When, you, when, you're, when you're doing something on your own, there's no one really to guide you or to help you. And you think you're shifting towards being more spiritually centered. And these abilities are starting to open up inside of you. Like, where do you turn to to ask people? Like, I didn't know where to go. 
And so it, it was kind of a slow process for me, but I think it was a meaningful one. I think it was a process where now I can educate people on how to follow the same direction, or now I have an explanation of what people are going through when they ask me, you know, what kind of spiritual changes they're going through. So I now have the ability to, uh, to give them uh, a, a deep understanding about what they're experiencing for themselves. But, you know, in the beginning, you think you're crazy because you're starting to tap into the communication of your spirit. And that's based on your spiritual awareness. Your spiritual awareness is different than your physical observations. They're, they're two different things. And when you become more spiritually aware of other sources of energy, God, angels, people who've crossed over, uh, spirits in nature, uh, a, a kind of a handshake starts to happen between your spirit and theirs. And this communication that takes place is usually based on several different things. Uh, you'll see visions. As long as your brain is quiet, you'll see visions that your spirit is projecting into a quiet brain. You'll see images and you'll know information that you'll touch here for, like your heart. You'll just say, I know this is true. I can sense the truth in this. But you'll also see images, visions, words. And so you learn this new language that every single person's spirit in the world has. We all have these sudden images or sudden visions that we're just not more fully aware of the way I learned to be. And then you learn how to interpret them all and it opens up a whole different language. Mm -hmm. And your life shifts to the greatest degree. You don't, you, don't, you don't guess anymore. You're constantly being fed with a guidance that you, you're learning faith in. So it's a, it's a huge shift in, our, in all our lives that we can all accomplish. It took a lot of courage for you to come out after being as a undercover narcotics cop to start oh, yeah. gallery readings. And as you said, I mean, the, the courage it took to come out and do that, you know, how was that received by those that uh, were around you or knew you? Uh, I got made fun of in the beginning. Oh yeah. I had <laughs> the people I worked with, you know, I didn't want to go and just, I wasn't ashamed of what I was experiencing. That's the first thing. You're never ashamed of using your spirit to talk to a higher wisdom or God or, you know, to have more of a loving philosophy behind life. You're never ashamed of it. But at the very same time, you have to look at people as being spiritually unlearned and spiritually uneducated. So people are going to sometimes mock or be skeptical of anything spiritual, even though that's exactly who they are. So when it came to the law enforcement officers, you know, there's been many times I saw things hung on my locker and, and then you, and then my, uh, my family um, or even friends of mine, they all disconnected from me because they all thought I was crazy. They're saying, oh, Rich thinks he can talk to God now. He's talking about love all the time. And, but you know, the cool thing is learning how to have self courage and faith. It's actually blind faith. You learn how to have blind faith in the truth and what resonates as a truth with you. And so far that communication has never proven itself wrong. And so all the people that were skeptical in the past or belittled me, those people now, see me in a different way and go, oh, maybe what he's saying was always true because now you're proving it in life. You're actually doing galleries in front of people, you know, 40 people that you never met before. And you're watching all these names and information come through and people are in tears and you're going, because it's just true. We just are a spirit and we can communicate with other people and, and higher wisdom. I don't want to forget to ask you this, Rich, because you're talking about these galleries, and I know you have your first online program coming up this yeah. Friday. So tell us about that, and you'll send me the link, and we can also put that up on the Facebook page. So tell us what time and how we can watch that. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, it's going to be a online Zoom course, and the course is going to be in 90 minutes. Um, the fee is $30, uh, whoever's interested. I limited it to 20 people. We have 12 signed up so far. 
and it's going to be exploring exploring um, your spiritual awareness. So that's the part of your spirit that is able to connect with other sources of intelligence. But you know, it's not just people on the other side. It's it's guidance. It's higher guidance for your own life. It's a it's your actual path to personal happiness and personal wisdom. So I'm going to explain in detail and give people demonstrations and walk them through on how to realize what they've been doing for a long time and how to grow it. Mm -hmm. Great. So what time is it? It's, uh, it's Friday. Um, I believe it's from 630 to 8. OK. Be nine yeah. minutes. Yeah. Yeah, on, on my Facebook page, you can just go to my Facebook page and there'll be a link that you can click on if people are interested in, uh, in signing up for it. Like I said, there's a, I think there's eight spots left. Eight spots if there are 12, yes. Okay, so that's your Facebook page, Expanding the Presence. Yes. Um, and also your website is expandingthepresence.com. They can also go there. there. So that means, everybody, there's only eight tickets left, so get it before they're all gone. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We're going to have a blast. It's uh it's going to be a it's going to be great information. I feel like I've reached a point now where in a very simple way I can explain what people have been experiencing throughout their life and never realizing it was spirit related. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we're going to look for that and many more because everybody is online now. But one of the things I wanted you to help us with tonight as well was whatever tips or ideas that you can help us living from that spiritually centered place today because there's such enormous uncertainty and stress and overwhelm with all that's going on. And clearly we understand by now this is going to continue. It's not just going to go away overnight. Yeah, it's a... Uh it's a real tragedy when I see um, when I see events like this have such an effect on a mass amount of people. And it's one of those things where um, where it has to do with control. So one of the things I've learned from myself, spiritual, I say in my next book, when I when I finally complete it, maybe sometime next year, I'm going to be writing about um, natural law, which are laws. Um, based on your spirit's growth and your spirit's evolution. So there's a natural set of laws that if we adhere to, we're going to see a continuous growth in our, in our life. And even, I mean, not only just spiritually, but financially, personally, relationship-wise, on and on and on. Uh, one of the things I had to learn for myself was what I have control over and what I don't have control over. And so what I was sharing with you earlier, after you asked me that question about when I first started off, about recognizing the two voices inside of me. When I learned to quiet my thinking and use my spirit as a source of guidance for my future, I get inspired with knowledge that leads me on a path where I do less suffering in life and I see more loving outcomes. When I think too much, and I'm using my brain and not my spirit, more or less I'm saying to God or that higher wisdom, hey, I don't need your help. I can do life by myself. And it's like the higher wisdom or God goes, go ahead, Rich. If you can do life for yourself, you tell me what you think is the right direction for you. And very often when I use my thinking as my source of wisdom, I find that I make choices that don't produce loving outcomes and I suffer more in life. Part of that suffering is trying to control the future or a future event for myself in the way I personally want for myself. And that usually results in stress, mental stress, mental worry, and mental anxiety. So when I try to control a future event in the way that I want for myself, but I have a mental fear that I can't, or I get mental stress because I don't think I can change the future to my liking, or I get mental anxiety because I can't control something that's about to happen in the way I personally want for myself. So I learned how to minimize um, stress, anxiety, fear in my life by not using my brain 
to try to think about the future or try to control the future. Instead, I learn how to stay in the moment. And when you learn to stay in the moment and you're not thinking about the future, your brain quiets down and your spirit opens up. And that's when you have the more love-based guidance that you get from higher wisdom that's saying, Rich, if you do this, you're going to find that your future is going to produce a lot, a lot better of an outcome. So I knew that my part is just listening to the guidance and then the outcome of that guidance, that that's, I give that up to God. And it seems to work out for me. So when I learn how to do spiritual, the when I learned how to be spiritually centered, that's what shifted my life the most, probably surrendering ownership over my life and giving up trying to control the future with my thinking. Great advice, because we all know that we're trying to control any kind of change in our life. And now we have this unprecedented change. Um, and, you know, in your first book, in Being More of God, one of the things that I loved was the story that you told about your daughter wanting this uh, special gift for Christmas. And of course, at this time in your life, you and your wife, Mary Ann, were back together again and go on this journey to find this special gift. So maybe you can share that in a quick detail for us. That was very, very moving. That, that was moving for me too. That, that was an experience that's etched in my soul forever, etched in my spirit forever. And same thing with Michelle and Courtney too. Um, it was earlier on and I just started communicating with spirits. So I was very hesitant on whether or not the information I was getting was the truth or not. And it was right before Christmas time, maybe a month before Christmas or a month and a half before Christmas. And Michelle's father who passed away, I was communicating with. And as I was doing so, our daughter, Courtney, walked in. She was probably like nine at the time. And the spirit of Michelle's father, Charlie, said, ask her what she wants for Christmas. And unbeknownst to us, right out of her mouth came, I want an old antique silver pocket watch, which we never heard of before. He then told me where to go to it in New Hope. He instructed me that there's going to be a corner when you go into town that's going to be abandoned. There's not going to be any store there now. Three stores down from it is going to be a jewelry store. Inside that jewelry store, there's going to be one silver pocket watch, and the price is going to be $210. And here's what the guy looks like that's going to stand behind the counter that's going to wait on you. And we were like, there's no way. There's no way that's even true. But we took the journey, and everything he said came true. There was an abandoned store on the corner. We followed it three stores down. There was a jewelry shop. The guy that fit the T to his description was standing behind the counter. We sat there with our mouths open and said, do you have antiques, um, watches, pocket watches? And he said, I only have one. It's silver. And I said, tell me the price. And he said, $210. And just at that time, as we're purchasing it, Michelle's father loved Elvis Presley. And he used to impersonate Elvis Presley all the time. And the Christmas music changed to an Elvis Presley song right at that particular time. God, God, what a story. Right, a story in the world. But you know what was, the, you know what was the, 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 the real meaning behind it is people who cross over, they live differently, they're alive. And this man, Michelle's father, knew exactly where in the future to go to get this silver pocket watch and gave all the details. So he was saying in a loving way, Rich, can you purchase this on my behalf for Courtney? I'll tell you where it's at. And it was his way of creating a loving experience for our entire family to talk about for years. Yeah. Well, it was also, again, a confirmation for you. Oh, yeah. Because you said you were, you were still not sure that everything you were getting was right. true. And right. that, you know, you and Michelle actually followed through on it. and found that exactly what he said, that's just so heartwarming. And to know that our spirit goes on and lives and helps us from the other side. 
Oh my God. And you know, since then I always look at that. That's, that's my standard now, Elsie. Like that's the, that's the story. I want to, that's our basis. Now we got to create even more incredible stories. So yes. we, have, we have other stories too that, you know, that, you know, that go along with it. But that was the one that was a, a big turning point in my life because I actually saw this amazing proof of this man, this man who's in spirit, still able to communicate in a loving way to his granddaughter. Great. Bruce, do you think that the veil between the worlds, you know, has gotten thinner and even more available to us at this time? I, I believe that our world is becoming more spiritually learned. I, I have a different philosophy about life than I did prior. I don't see people as good or bad. I see people being, being either spiritually learned or spiritually unlearned. And I see our world evolving where there's more spiritually learned people or more people in this world that want to teach their spirit and educate their spirit. So that's what I'm seeing. So I agree with you about the veil. That's thinning the veil because you have more people that are incredibly capable of being these amazing um, spirit-centered, spirit-based lifetimes to have these experiences. And more people are, are now fitting that role. And I just, I love it. I love seeing it, such as you, people like yourself. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't want to forget to say hello to all the people that have joined us. Diane is here and Sue, and Joyce, Mooney, and Deborah, Gloria, Valentina from California, and Denise, Sam. So we have a great group. And, you know, Denise just commented on what a fabulous story that was. An amazing Thanks, story Denise. about the pockets for Pocket Watch. So some last final words for us and tell us again the information about Friday. Oh, it's called uh, Exploring Your Spiritual Awareness. And it's Friday, 6.30 um, um, on Zoom. And you can get all the information off my Facebook or even my website. It's on my website, uh, too. But it's going to be, a, like I said, it's going to be a small group of people. Um, I have some, uh, you know, amazing uh, personal demonstrations we're all going to do. And uh, it'll be it'll be a it'll be a great class for those people that are, you know, that that are more spiritually interested or opening themselves up to the truth. Mm -hmm. So I know, uh, Rich, this is just the beginning of more that you're going to do online. So if for any reason, you know, the tickets are sold out, uh, keep an eye on Rich's sign up for his newsletter so that you can get continuing information about other events that uh, he'll be doing. And also look at his events page. He's often doing things locally in the area. And we also want you to be online more so you can finish writing that second book. Thank uh, you. Yeah. So great, Rich. Thanks so much for joining us. Everybody, all Rich's information, his email and uh, his website are up there just above the Facebook Live here tonight. And I want to thank everyone for joining us. And if there's someone else you'd like me to interview or ideas that you have, please let me know because this is a great way to reach people and introduce people. And of course, Rich has been around. He's not, he's very well known in the area, but just to touch base now that he's going to be doing more things online and uh, right on his Facebook page. Great. You're a blessing. Thank you. Thank you, Rich, for joining us.